this is Cheryl Todd of Gun Freedom Radio. And I'm the other guy, Dan Todd, reminding you that we and the show you are listening to are proud members of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Find out more and check out all of the other great shows and content at selfdefenseradio.net. Welcome to Unload and Show Clear, the podcast about all things IDPA. And now, here's your host, the only man to shoot the same non-threat four times at Nationals, Lloyd Bailey. Welcome to another episode of Unload and Show Clear, where we counter the media's negative image of gun culture by introducing you to the amazing men and women who are involved in IDPA, International Defensive Pistol Association. We're focusing on people, not politics, the everyday people from all walks of life, the men and women who volunteer their time and effort and spend their hard-earned dollars on travel, match fees, and gear to make this sport great. Today is another something different for you. For those of you who follow me on Facebook or YouTube, you probably know that I had the pleasure of traveling to the 2019 IDPA World Championship in Talladega, Alabama recently. I visited with uh, a bunch of of shooters. I I was at the range on Friday afternoon and Saturday morning. Got to meet a lot of shooters, got to see all the stages, had some stage walkthroughs. You'll be seeing lots of videos in the coming weeks about that experience. And I got to meet lots of, of awesome match staff who were doing a tremendous job at the match. And two of the people I got a chance to meet for the first time, I'm going to be sharing those interviews with you today. Joyce Wilson is the executive director of IDPA, and I've never had a chance to meet Joyce, but thanks to my friends at Match Shark, I got an introduction, and I had an opportunity to chat with her at length on Friday, and then she graciously agreed to speak on camera on Saturday. She, in turn, introduced me to one of the founding fathers of the sport, John Sale. And John kindly agreed to go on camera for a few minutes and to talk a little bit about the history of the sport. So today, um, bear with the video, the audio, which was taken from my, uh, from my camera. There's a little bit of background noise at times. There's, um, this was at the pavilion down on the range. So there's a little bit of background noise. Occasionally you may hear a, uh, a golf cart driving by, and you'll probably hear some gunshots in the background. I've tried to trim as much of that out and sort of equalize it as much as I can so it's not distracting. But the majority of, of what you're going to hear today is my my interviews with, uh, with Joyce and with John. I was really happy to get a chance to meet both of them, and I really do appreciate them taking a little time out of their day uh, to spend with me. And you get to hear that interview today. But first, I wanted to uh, thank our sponsor, the Blue Bullets. I'm really excited and honored to be able to say that today's show is brought to you by the Blue Bullets. Why am I so excited? Well, for one, the Blue Bullets make cost-effective quality bullets specifically designed for competitive shooters. Two, they're big supporters of the shooting sports because they're competitive shooters themselves. And three, because I'm a customer and I believe in their products. Using their own polymer-based liquid coating that they mix in-house, Blue Bullets are designed to prevent barrel leading, to reduce smoke, and yet they're priced comparably to other uncoated lead bullets. And unlike uncoated lead bullets, the Blue Bullets are Glock safe. How did they do that? They did that by spending six years developing a coating and a process that ensures consistency and quality. I can tell you from from my own experience that while I usually don't perform very well at matches, the Blue Bullets never let me down. Visit thebluebullets.com today. Tell them you heard about it on Unload and Show Clear by using this promo code BBUSC at checkout, and you will save 5% off of your order. The Blue Bullets. Family owned and operated by competitors who know what you want in competition bullets. Check them out at thebluebullets.com. So it's it's a pleasure to finally get a chance to meet you. Tell us about how the match has gone so far and compare it to previous worlds. You've had a challenge of weather, weird weather, 
every extreme. You've been here for oh, I've I've been here days. for at least thirteen days. Yes. Good heavens. Yeah. So how it, it everyone seems happy despite the fact that they've been waterlogged. Yes. This is our third world championship and our largest by far. We backed that against uh, our first PCC national championship, right. which has been exciting. Um, we've had over 500 competitors come through the two matches. Uh, yeah, the weather's been a little challenging here and there, uh, especially for the shooters yesterday morning. The safety officers actually got kind of lucky this year because we got the build done so much earlier that we mm. had extra time for them to be able to, to shoot the match. Right. So they got a little more relaxed shoot than they normally do, which is nice because these guys put so much work into it. And usually they're the ones that get rushed through, you know, pushed through, the weather's usually crummy, <laughs> and then they're standing out there, you know, working all day long. Right. So it was really nice for them to get a chance to have a, a decent match. Um, yesterday we had a lot of rain, luckily we didn't have any storms, right. you know, today there was a threat, but so far things have been good, you know, we've only got a couple more hours until we're done. Um, and these, these squads that are out here now only have what? Probably two, two, three bays, two bays? Probably two more bays now. Nice. Yeah, so okay. we're, we're very close to the end, we see, you know, we see the light, light at the, at the end, end of the tunnel. <laughs> right, and, exactly. I, and I don't think it's a train. No. So. <laughs> but, I don't think so. I don't. But yeah, it's, it, it's been a wonderful match. The match staff has been exceptional this year. Everything has gone smoother than you can ever imagine. People are happy. People have enjoyed the match. The course fire has been great. The match staff has been wonderful. You know, even in the downpour yesterday, <laughs> when those poor guys were out there and you know, timer in hand or squirt pad in hand or whatever. I mean, all the shooters commented on how much the match staff was. It was really wonderful. Match staff has been terrific. You've got great, yes. great uh, match directors and assistant match directors. Yes. Talk about um, how many, you told me yesterday how many countries were represented. We've had 24 countries here. Wow. And people from 39 different states even within the U.S. Wow. Yeah. So the whole geographical diversity has been exceptional for this match. Much, much greater than any other match we've ever held. And you had two, almost two full squads from China. Mm -hmm. And you had a large group from Kenya, which they were fantastic. Yes. They were so much fun to be with. And yes. they were so excited. You know, the Asians are always very reserved. These guys were so excited to be here at this match. Yeah, we we actually were able to get the, the Kenyans in kind of at the last minute. Um, they actually showed up here without even slots. You know, just hoping that they might be able to get to shoot a couple of stages. Wow. And when Rick came to me and said, you know, I think we can squeeze them through the match, I was like, that's awesome. And they have been super appreciative, and in fact, you know, they all said bless you to me so many times. I'm pretty sure that's why. <laughs> that's why the rain's weather. holding off. So, it's, hey, I'll take I'll it. Take I'll it. take it. Yes. It's all good. But yeah, they they've been wonderful to have here. All the internationals. I mean, I met guys from the Czech Republic, guys from Turkey, guys from Poland. I mean, all over the place. Places I didn't even know they could own firearms. So that's right. that's way cool too. Yes, and I I, I had a nice conversation with a couple of guys from Kenya who were talking about firearms and, and training in Kenya and they're like, this is huge for us. Yeah. Trying to convince our government that this is a safe and, and uh, uh, this is a sport that they should they should back, they should support. Right. And uh, the fact that they're here is just a, another step in the right direction for the sport in Africa. Yep. Um, they're be going to be hosting the Pan-African Championship mm -hmm. in Kenya next year. So yes. they're very excited about that. Yes. Um, and then, of course, I talked to a, a, a number of people here from small clubs around the country who are like, this is really cool. I'm learning so much just Absolutely. watching how this is being run. Absolutely. Um, I didn't get to shoot it, but I am so glad I got to come and see it. Oh, and we're thrilled to have you here. I mean, it's very nice to meet you. I've never had opportunity so I am so glad to meet you and I thank you for the hospitality and thank you for putting on this great match and next year is nationals in Grand Junction Colorado the cameo shooting and education
which uh, brand new complex that is just state of the art. Gorgeous facility. Gorgeous. Cannot wait to get up there to see that. So, you so, probably ought to shoot the match next year. Yes. I shot uh, Nationals in Crescent in 2016. Mm -hmm. Didn't manage to get to it in 2017 or 18. And then was hoping to get here, but didn't work out. But I got to see it. So. 2020 is a great 2020 year. 2020 is a great year. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. I am blessed to have uh, John Sale with me. I, it's great to meet you. I understand you are one of the original founders of IDPA. That's correct. Uh, Talk about the... Uh, back in 1996, uh, six of us got together and decided we all were action pistol shooters, but we decided we needed a sport with a, a greater defensive slant to it. Right. So we got together and uh, we were concerned that perhaps it would just be the six of us getting together occasionally uh, <laughs> throughout the years. And 20 years later, uh, we've come to this. We have people here from 24 countries, 39 states. We never imagined uh, Ideas, yeah. 501 competitors, and we never uh, dreamed that we would grow to this. Uh, Talk about how it's changed over the years. What, has, what do you think it is that grabbed people's attention and got them coming back and, and it started to grow? Because it is really amazing. The original sport we had, it goes back to the, uh, actually the late 70s and early 80s, became so specialized. Uh, it is a true sport, they call it uh, golf with a gun, and it may be, and, and that's good. Uh, anytime anybody uh, shoots, I think that's good for the country. Uh, it became a real sport, and there's an old cliche that you you fight like you train. And the, the tricks that you'd use to win a match would get you in trouble in a uh, more serious encounter. Uh, I was on the board of the original. Sport and uh, tried to move it more towards its origin, origins. So the six of us got together and said, well, let's go back to the original origins to make a defensive sport. Uh, the changes I've seen when we started, we have a rule book of 27 rules. The rule book today is a small phone. Book. Right. <laughs> we were naive as to what we could get away with. Uh, we really wanted to present problems to a shooter. Mm -hmm. Say this is a scenario solved, uh, but reality creeped into this, and we had to create more rules. Uh, I think the world we live in, uh, one of the fastest growing is, is ladies during this period. We live in a very impolite world, and uh, yeah. I think people are saying uh, the growth of concealed carries. Uh, people buy a gun. Our sport is a sport which will allow them to learn how to use it. I tell people, join our sport, you can make friends with your gun. And uh, we've gone from a membership of six to coming up on 30,000 now. Fantastic. And uh, the sport has exceeded our, our wildest dreams. It's been a tremendous uh, match. I'm, I'm uh, very glad I got to come and look at it, come and see it, and I'm, I'm so glad I got a chance well, to meet you. Thanks for your interest. Thank you. It. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank our guests for coming on the show and our sponsors for making all of this possible. Take a moment, if you would, to check out the website. Check out our show notes at unloadpodcast.com. We've got lots of interviews with more amazing guests like the one you heard today. Join our Facebook group at unloadpodcast.com slash Facebook for all the latest updates and to connect with other fans of the show. And if you'd like to support the show, we sure would appreciate it. Consider becoming a patron at unloadpodcast.com slash extra. I've got some full-length interviews and special content available there exclusively for patrons as well. And if you know somebody or you yourself would make an interesting guest for a future episode of Unload and Show Clear, please contact me at lloyd at unloadpodcast.com or click on the contact page on the website and send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Tune in again next time for another episode of Unload and Show Clear.